episode 61. Uh, it's either episode two or three of me not using my headphones. I like it. It, 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 it locks my jaw wearing those headphones. And, and anyone who knows me for some unknown reason, some, uh, there's no sense, there's no rhyme, there's no reason, but it seems to always be there. This idea that Jesse loves more than anything else to flap his jaw. I, there's, no, there's no reason for it, but it just seems to be like this conspiracy among Jesse's friends. So anyone that knows me would say, for some reason I don't figure out, but they, I just, I know it. I know how the cow chews the cud, and I know how the sun comes up in the morning, and I know how the cow crosses the street, and I know how the moon changes the tide, and I know how my friends conspire that I talk too much. And I just know that they're going to say if Jesse's headphones inhibit his jaw motion, of course he's not going to like it. You, they, they, you mean they're going to say... Uh, you know, George is new, but uh, he's probably right about this. They're not going to say... That, that Jesse's not going to like the headphones if the headphones make it difficult for him to talk. They're going to say Jesse should wear the headphones if the headphones make it difficult for Jesse to talk. Uh, what are friends for? Okay, so I started something this week. You know, remember, the, the purpose of this podcast is it's uh, it is as... As a, a British uh, lady explained uh, in, in one of my recent visits to Vietnam... She said, oh, it's a chimney. I said, what? A ch- it's a chimney. It lets you blow off your smoke. You know, and I said, I said, well, okay, all right. I suppose that's what it is. What, what I'm doing in my normal, daily, boring, uh, whatever life, uh, I give you the updates and, and I vent and I can express myself and rattle around a paper and sound like I'm reading from something. I just did the first, possibly only, but I just randomly did this 30 minute, 30 some minute podcast from the editor at Pacific Daily Times. And so all depending on upload times and stuff, it should be over at the Pacific Daily Times YouTube channel featured prominently on the beginning of the the channel's page. And also, although it might be only available for new visitors, like non-subscribers, because there's a, I mean, I don't know if you know this, but like once you subscribe, the, the front video on the front of the channel is different. But uh, no, I think I might link, link it at the at the Times too, like a like a like a word from the editor, you know. That that was just a very interesting ramble for me talking about the philosophy I have at the Times and 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 how I view. I, I go into the Second Amendment a little bit, uh, and just offer some more roundabout thoughts on the Second Amendment, uh, a little bit a little bit more deep and sober and academic view of how people interpret the Second Amendment. But I also talk about, you know, other countries and, and why I, I don't always have an opinion on what other countries should do. I, I, I Go listen to it. I mean, it was me talking after all. So, of course, it must be wonderful. What was that quote? Uh, let's see. I'm going to find a right dot pink. Uh, is, it, is it quotes? Yeah. A right dot pink slash quotes. And if if we have uh, the unthought, the uh, un, okay, John Maynard, I uh, can't can it Keynes, I can't, I don't, I don't know. It shows my ineptitude. He's British, so maybe I should say John Maynard Keynes. Uh, it's K E Y N E S. George, don't tell anyone that I don't know how to pronounce it. Well, it was your job to go figure out that and do the research. Before. No, don't. The podcasters are supposed to be prepared for that stuff. I may have to fire you, but then I'll deal with someone else that's new. So anyhow, John Maynard, uh, John Maynard, I'm, I'm pronouncing it Kenneth. Words ought to be a little wild, for they are the assault of thoughts on the unthinking. Uh... Well, it kind of gets into, uh, you know, one of my buddies was whining and sniveling. Trump is destroying America with his mean talk. And then he goes on Facebook and starts gadflying around. And I'm like, well, I'm glad he converted. Um, 
you know, I, there's a lot of whining about words. I think I was, uh, I was dealing with whining about words a lot this week. In fact, that's the other thing that I'm, I'm getting into. I'm finally starting my 365 devotional motivational thingamabob. For a long time, I've been thinking about this. Should I have a devotional? Should Jesse write a devotional? I mean, you know, there, there are certain landmarks that, that brilliant, educated, handsome, confident minds, uh, I suppose that could include me, are supposed to achieve in their lives. And one of them is Bible translation. Another one is a theology book. And then there's always the manifesto. And I've written a manifesto for the church, the 95 Theses of the Clerical System, and the People's Party, a political manifesto. And uh, <clears throat> what else uh, do we have? Uh, yes, theology. I've written a novel. And, you know, I, 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 I've, I've written about, you know, news in the information age or, you know, whatever, Pacific Times. And I need a devotional. It is, it's like something that people do when they write books. I need a devotional. So I'm, I'm writing a devotional. And it's over at watchstandpray.com slash 365. You can just go to watchstandpray.com and you'll see it. But 365 will take you directly to the introduction page of, of how I'm writing this and, and making it work and so forth. Every devotional will have exactly 365 words. So it's 365, 365 word reads. And I'm not calling it daily devotional, but it's kind of implied, you know, but uh, read it how you like. The, 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 the idea is, I, I, I really thought about, you know, should I make this a Bible study? And it, it's like, well, all the ideas are biblical, but I just kind of wanted Jesse rant. It, you know, like, like this is, you know, sort of my opinion about how this, you know, what are you competent at? What are you good at talking about? What, what things are are you an authority on that you have a right, reasonable right and responsibility to talk about and to try to teach people about? They're the things that you can just talk. Marshall Mathers said uh, several years ago, I won't quote him exactly because I don't want this to be censored uh, for profanity, but he said something like, I just get on the mic and spit it. And whether you'd like to admit it, I just um, <clears throat> more or less spit it uh, better than most rappers out there. And there's something about being able to get up and give an unplanned speech. Trump did that. And a number of people have done that. If you can't get up and give an unplanned speech, I don't think you know what you're talking about. Now, I, I mean, there, there is a need for preparation. And, and you know, I understand some basic diligence. But the, the truth is, if you want to find out what somebody really believes and really knows and really understands, see what they say to their friends and family around the dinner table when it's not planned. A friend of mine, Enoch Olson, uh, E-N-O-C-H, he, he would often say that when you have a glass of water and you knock it over, oil doesn't come out. When, when your life gets shaken and jarred and you, get, you knock over and spill, whatever's inside of you is what comes out. And so I thought about doing Bible study stuff. I've translated Bible. I've written, I did 52bible.com, the number 52 Bible. I've done that stuff. I could plan out a Bible teaching thing, but you know, I wanted, I wanted Bible rooted, Bible thinking. Jesse can just spit it and rant about this subject stuff because that's the stuff that I really know that's in my heart that just flows out like water through the Grand Canyon, as it were. Uh, I, I look, I'm excited about it. I'm really excited about it. We're starting. My goal is three months to get all 365, 360 word reads done. I've got to get to the point. Isn't it a great thing when your childhood friend learns a technical skill that you could never understand and you learn another technical skill that they could never understand? The concept of mutual non-understandability seeds the source of respect. How many people fight because they think their ideas are better than everyone else's? Everyone's an expert referee at a sports game. The ref isn't there because he's smart. He's just the idiot in charge. We treat each other that way. No one can fully understand a fellow human. Advanced, specialized knowledge helps us to realize that just a little more. And that's the point. I'm Jesse Steele. JesseSteele.com.